Hello, it's me again, Marcus. So I've had my ID3 for one month. I just wanted to show you the weather's not always good in Portugal and currently it's cloudy, as you can see. Let's start what happened in this month. Well, I've been working from home because of COVID and I went to the Algarve three times for three weekends. I went to the Algarve from Lisbon to the Algarve, about a 300 kilometer trip, 600 kilometers return because the weather was good in the Algarve. I did 2,589 kilometers. That's quite a lot, I guess, for one month. So one of the reasons for me to get the EV was that hopefully it would be cheaper and I'd actually be able to drive more. So this is a bad thing. I guess I should be driving less and taking more public transport, but no, I think the EV allows you to drive more because it's cheaper so let's look at pricing how many kilowatt hours i've actually used and how much i've spent on that so at home i've actually charged at home 153 kilowatt hours and on public charges i've actually charged more because i've been going to the algarve and back i've actually had to use a lot of public charges on public charges i've had to use 254 kilowatt hours so in total that's 407 kilowatt hours so at home i've spent around 18 euros and on public charging i've actually spent 55 5 euros 15 cents so in total i've charged the car 407 kilowatt hours to do two two thousand five hundred and eighty nine kilometers so that works out about 15.7 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers that's actually very good consumption i've been a bit on motorway a bit on national roads and a bit of shopping so 15.7 kilowatt hours per hundred is actually very good economy now i calculated how much this would have cost me in my c4 cactus so currently in portugal the price of petrol according to my gasolina the average price of petrol is currently one euro 45 cents and my cactus did an average of six liters per hundred kilometers so my cactus the total cost Cost would have been 226 euros and in the id3 using electric i've actually spent 73 euros and a lot of that has actually been on public charging so if i'd have just charged from home without using public charge it would actually be cheaper so in fact i've saved 150 euros this month over my petrol car by using my id3 also another statistic is the average price of spent on public charging is actually 22 cents 22 cents is actually very cheap i thought it was going to be a bit more expensive than that so the most expensive price i spent on charging was on the motorway so it's a bit like petrol petrol's more expensive on the motorway it's no different for electric charging that was 35 cents per kilowatt hour and the cheapest was 17 cents. That's just a little bit more than what I'm paying at home. So 17 cents on AC charger, extremely cheap. And that includes VAT. So public charging in Portugal, in my mind, is cheap. My average is 22 cents, most expensive 35 cents, the cheapest 17 cents. As a petrol driver a month ago, not an EV driver, there's some preconceptions I had. And one of those preconceptions was that I'd imagine that when I'm driving on the motorway or the national roads, for example, on the motorway, I won't be doing 120 kilometers an hour. I'd perhaps be lowering the speed to 110, 100 kilometers an hour. So I'd arrive at my destination with enough charge. And that hasn't happened at all. I've been keeping to all the speed limits. I've been doing 120 kilometers on the motorway. And I've been doing 90 kilometers on the national road. I'd say I've actually been driving quicker in this car than I would my C4 Cactus. Why is that? Because it accelerates quicker. It gets to speed quicker. And because it's quieter you don't realize you're getting to speed quicker so first misconception i had was that i'd be driving slower in this car and i'm not another worry i had was about charging obviously we've all got worries about charging i know my only long distance journeys i've been to the algarve and it's not that mountainous on the way and the charging network is okay on the algarve it's better on the national roads than it's on the motorway uh, but even on the motorway there's two or three chargers i can use on the way so that's fine for the 300 kilometer trip so i want to drive to north of portugal where it's more mountainous and i want to do a couple of day trips to take my daughter to north of portugal so we can try the charging network there and see how the car copes in a more mountainous region and see how the charging is so i'm going to do videos about that so something for you to look forward to one of my worries with charging was actually i think i don't have a problem waiting 20 or 30 minutes but i wanted to see if my daughter or my wife had a problem waiting 20 or 30 minutes at charging stops and actually they don't it's actually been fine and we've never stopped anywhere for longer than 25 minutes now i'm going to show you a video of us charging at a destination charger one video of us charging at the way home and another video of us charging at the way home just so you can see how charging is and why my family enjoys charging so here i'm in the seaside town of montgordo and here we have a ac charger so let's see what we have to do first of all we have to plug it in the cable is plugged in and we swipe it on the machine like that and we wait 
a minute it's gone blue if we go around to the car the green lights on you can see there we've got the green light running across the car is currently on 26 percent so hopefully we're going to go up to 80 percent and that's going to take two hours 50. everybody is obsessed with quick charging no, should we be on 50 kilowatts? Should we be on 100 kilowatts? But I've just come from my flat now, about a 10 minute drive to this wonderful town of Montgordo. And over there, 300 meters away is the beach. Here we've got the town center with lots of restaurants. So here, I don't want to charge quickly. There is a little close to us with a 50 kilowatt charger. I don't want to charge there because I want to charge slowly. So why do I want a slow charger? I want a slow charger because I want to be in this town two hours, 50 minutes. I'm going to go to the beach now, relax, enjoy the beach, and then come back when this is finished charged. A lot of the time you have to consider is the fact you don't actually want a car to charge quickly here in this destination. I want it to charge slowly. I want to be able to go to the beach. And when in two hours, 50, minutes time i come back unplug the car if i still want to stay in the town i'll stay in the town if i don't want to stay in the town then we we'll drive home and uh you know even if we want to stay for two hours i still get enough charge just stay for two hours instead of two hours 50. so um as you can see it's charging and i'm going to be back here in two hours 50. let's stop getting obsessed about 100 kilowatt charges 200 kilowatt charge etc a lot of the time you don't actually want to charge quickly it's not even about needing to it's i don't actually want to at this moment charge quickly so we're doing a nice walk on the beach while the car is charging on the ac charge as you can see it's october but the weather is still good we've been walking on the beach we've walked for about eight kilometers i think it's the car's been here around two hours 45 minutes so let's see how we stop the charging session to get my mio card again pass my mio card as you can see there we've put in 32 kilowatt hours two hours 51 minutes should be around there we passed again to stop so back into the car it charged exactly to 80 percent perfect here it's um we've now got a range of 313 kilometers when the car's at 80%. So, I'm at a 50 kilowatt charger here in Albufeira. Oh, yeah, it's green, you see, so the handshake's done. And if we look here, you see um, everything's going well. And the battery's currently at 46%. I have come from my flat in the Algarve into Vera, which is uh, 70 kilometers away. And there, the charge of the car was 69%. I'll just show you here where you can see where we are. So I traveled from there, and we're here now in Albufeira at this charging port. Now my daughter and my wife have gone over there because there's a shoe shop and my daughter needs new shoes. They're going to look at the new shoes while we're here. And as you can see here, this is exactly on my route back to my house, which is here where you see the home. So currently we don't have enough charge to get there, as you can see that there, because currently um, we came here with about 48%, so it's about 23, 24% to get from there to here. If I charge up to 80% here, I can get all the way home because I only need about 65%. Obviously, obviously I have to keep an eye on the charge state because if we got a lot of wind, bad weather, if I start to drive, you know, like a nutter, perhaps I won't make it home. But in theory from here, I can make it home and I've done it at least two or three times before. So we've got the wonderful Mio app and this charger here, as you can see, um, it's only been hasn't been used today. I'm the first person using this charger. This is a new charger It's probably only been here a couple of months or working a couple of months When I came on Friday, it hadn't been used until five days And I think the last person to use it was me on Sunday night I'd used it and on Friday night I'd come to use it again. This charger was here and nobody was using it so in Portugal what we have to consider with the charging network is that people are putting chargers and they're not always being used to full capacity. Now, if I had the petrol station, it's only being used once on Friday, uh, once on, you know, once on Sunday, once on Friday, perhaps again on Saturday, again on Sunday, I'm not gonna be making any money because I'm not paying much money for these charging sessions. I'm paying like four or five euros. So um, people do complain about the, the charges in Portugal that there's no 100 kilowatt in the ID3 I don't think for a 300 kilometer trip you need 100 kilowatt 50 is fine you know 10 minute stop 20 minute stop on the motorway you know for me that's not very long um it's fine and if I did charge 10 percent and not 80 percent I wouldn't even need to stop here for 10 minutes um going on my current route uh, so what people have to understand is people are putting in charges but they're not all, be all being used um as they should be 
Um, so that's something that we have to keep in mind about the charges in Portugal. They're not at full occupancy, at least some of them aren't. But it's important to see that somebody's invested a lot of money in this 50 kilowatt charger and currently it's not being used. Until this one starts to be used a lot, there's no point to put another one here in place because it's expensive. Um, and then, but there are certainly places on the motorway, for example, where I definitely think they do need to currently put in more chargers. So Kalina, you've just been to the Portuguese shoe shop and you've just bought some shoes. You took 15 minutes because I've been here talking to people. And we've got five minutes left, so it's a 20 minute charge up to 80%. We have to check if it's made in Portugal. Yeah, you meant to check in the shop if it's made in Portugal, not here. <laughs> Before you buy them. We only buy Portuguese shoes, Kalina, I've told you that. No, we don't. We buy French shoes. They're French shoes. But we have to support the Portuguese economy, don't we? And Portuguese shoes are the best. They even give you a free bag? Yes. Wow. Not a plastic one. Not plastic. Wow, look at these. Boots for the winter. Nice. Yeah. Now, where are they made? I don't know. It doesn't say. Give me the shirt. Tell you where it's made. Give me the other one. If it doesn't tell you where it's made, it's probably China. No, it's not. This is nice. it's made in Portugal. Does the other one tell you where it's made? Yeah, made in Portugal. It's written in there. With real leather. Quality so, shoes. So these yeah. are quality shoes made in Portugal with real leather. How much did you pay for them, Kalina? Too much. Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> Too much. Yeah. Anyway, we're rich. No, we're not rich. <laughs> we're everything but rich. You can be saying that on YouTube. Yeah, we're anyway, rich at that bit. Anyway, we're rich. So... No, we're not rich. <laughs> you have to pretend you are rich. No, you won't. Otherwise, people will be sending me letters asking for money. I don't no, have any money to don't. give them. Yes, I do. So we are very rich, so we could afford them. And so we've only got five minutes to go. And the shoes are as well with real leather they made in Portugal it says on the shoes and it's the best quality only for rich people so it's 78 percent just put another two percent in they will be ready to go if we don't stop to charge we'll probably get home on about 15 percent so I might stop in Lidl on the way if it's available just for 10 minutes just so when I get home it's above 20 percent just keep the car above 20 percent how happy are you to have the car very happy do you like the car, Kalina? Yes. Do you like charging? Yes. Oh, you like charging, especially if um, you get new shoes. <laughs> so if you want new shoes, there's a very good charging spot here in Albufeira. You can buy quality Portuguese shoes that we don't know the price of. No need to charge more because it will start going down from 50 kilowatts. So how do we stop charging? What I have to do is um, hit this button here, stop. Problem with the charger, it's saying. Ah, yeah. Options, terminate session, confirm. This is terminated. What I have to do is pull this out, it comes out nicely, put it back in here. The machine's making a lot of noise. Now I have to plus this, put this back in here. And last time I forgot to charge, shut the charging port. So this time I'm definitely going to shut the charging port, shut. So it'll make a a cowboy error, and we'll go back on our journey. We've stopped here in Grandola Lidl. We don't have to actually stop because I've got 180 kilometers of range. We've got 90 kilometers to go. But um, Kalina wants a sandwich. I'll probably have a sandwich. So we probably should just stop here for 10 minutes, just have the sandwich. So we're actually stopping because we want to stop. As there's a charger here, we might as well charge a little bit. And why charging is not such a hassle as I thought it would be. Obviously, if I'm going to drive 500 kilometers to Madrid, I may have a different opinion, but then I'm thinking, well, perhaps you can uh, do charging around lunchtime or dinner time. So perhaps it's not a problem. Perhaps there's not such an issue with charging. Now, I know range is really important. EV owners like myself now say, you know, you don't need a car with such a big range because people only do like, I don't know, 30 kilometers every day or only 100 kilometers a week or something stupid. But for me, I do need the range of this car, this 420 WLTP range. I wouldn't want a car with less range than this, but charging speed is more important. And even on 50 kilowatt hour chargers, the efficiency of the car, the range, and that it always charges at 50 kilowatt hours up to 80%, for me is important. Um, bring on the 100 kilowatt hour chargers, it'll be even quicker than great. So again, 
I don't want a car with less range than this, but I don't also need a car with more range than this. 420 kilometers WLTP is absolutely fine for me. Would I want an extra 10 kilowatt hours, an extra 20 kilowatt hours? I just don't need it. I don't feel I need it at the moment. Perhaps my mind will change. I'll talk about that in the future, but at the present point in time, this car probably says has exactly the perfect range for me. It just works for me, it's perfect. This, I don't need any more range and charging speed is absolutely great, fantastic. So um, I know some, some EV drivers say, why don't you get a car with less batteries? That may work for you. But as I regularly do 300, 300 trips, then I need this range. If I was to do those trips two or three times a year only, not two or three times a month, that's I could consider an ID3 that was 45 kilowatt hours. But at present, the 58 kilowatt hours is fine for me and the 77 kilowatt hours to me it's just too much battery i just don't need it what would i say to marcus if i could go back a month buy the car or don't buy the car i've had absolutely no problems with the car there's been a few software niggles but nothing that really affects me the software is better on this even with some niggles than it was on my c4 cactus and those will be improved if i'm going to tell myself a month ago if I should get this car or not. So we've actually got information now about the fast lane editions in Portugal. So the standard ID3, not the ID3 first, what I've got. And I actually know the pricing for that now. So I'm going to go through that and tell you if I should have waited to get a fast lane or if I should have got my ID3 first a month ago. And I'll tell that to Marcus as well. So my ID3 first cost 38,000 euros. And now they've got the life which costs 38,652 euros. It's actually 600 euros more expensive than my ID3 first. Does the life come with anything my ID3 first doesn't? It actually, it does. And where I said Volkswagen was skimping on cost cutting measures in my opinions video, you can look at it here. One of the biggest things they skimped on for me in my cost cutting video was that is here there's no cover on mine and here there's no usb ports on the others there's two usb ports here there's a cover here and induction charging here so mine doesn't have that because i've done cost cutting to the extreme now i'm not too upset about that but i just think it was cost cutting to the extreme you can watch in my opinions video i'll link it below now the life actually does come with the cover with the two USB ports and induction charging, and it actually comes with one extra feature, which is a light when you open a door. Mine doesn't have a light projecting down here when you open a door. So there's four things on the life that don't come with my car. Perhaps that's why it's 600 euros extra. But to me, my car, the first, they just skimp too much on the center console. I mean, it's not a huge issue for me. Would I pay 600 euros extra to get the light, the cover, and the two USB ports? No, I wouldn't. I won't pay 600 euros extra for that. I think it should have been included for free. What does mine have that the life doesn't have? Well, mine has the dual climate. And if we get out of here, mine has these silver stickers here. Now you can add that to the life, but it costs almost 500 euros extra. Should you add it to the life? No, I really like the silver stickers, but I won't pay almost 500 euros for them. I'll just keep it without the silver stickers. The only real thing that mine came with that I can find is dual climate and perhaps light assist. I'm not sure if the standard life comes with life assist. light assist. The first does come with light assist and the light assist is where it automatically turns on maximums and mediums for you. It's very good. I don't know if the life comes with that. And my ID3 first come with 600 euros of charging card with it which should work in the Portuguese network this month hopefully they say it's going to start working in November on the Portuguese mobile network so wait for that it's not November maybe December so I'll be able to use my 600 euros and the ID3 first actually came with a wall box so they didn't actually give me a wall box uh, my dealer phoned me up and she said would you like a moon energy kick portable wall box and I said yes I've actually got uh, energy kick moon portable war box now which is much better so i'm very happy and that cost a thousand euros so already i've got 1600 euros more than what you get with the life so i wouldn't buy a life over the first i'm very happy i didn't wait to see the prices of the life because for me the first is a much better deal than the life however there is one 
fast lane model that I'm really interested in. And I'm really interested in it because of the panoramic roof. My C4 Cactus had a panoramic roof and I just loved it. I don't feel I'm missing a panoramic roof too much in this car because this window is really big and the light comes in. But, but still, I would love a panoramic roof. So they've got what they call the ID style, the ID3 style. And the ID3 style is actually 42,358 euros. So 4,000 euros more expensive than my car. That comes with a panoramic roof. It comes with the uh, matrix LED LED lights as well. So if I was going to buy the car today, I'd be making a big decision over, for example, the life or the style. And for the extra 4,000 euros because of panoramic roof and the matrix LED headlights, I'm thinking perhaps, I'm not, perhaps I would be swayed to get that one for 4,000 euros. I know panoramic roof and the ID matrix like 4,000 euros is a lot of money. Let's think about it. With 4,000 euros, I could get the top of the range Apple MacBook Pro laptop. I could get three iPhones for 4,000 euros. 4,000 euros is a lot of money. But I may have been considered in doing that. So the style, I really do like the style. But it's 4,000 euros extra. It doesn't come with the portable, it didn't come with the Moon Energy Kick. It didn't come with 600 euros. So in reality, it's more like 5,600 euros extra. Is the panoramic roof and the Matrix Life lights worth 5,500 euros extra? No, definitely not. So I'm extremely happy that I ordered the ID3 first. I'm not jealous of people who have got the style. If I was ordering it today, I may go for the style over the life, definitely 4,000 euros. It's something to think about. If I was going to go back one month now to Marcus and tell him, should he purchase this car? I would say, yes, purchase this, this car. It's absolutely fabulous. I actually love it. And moving to a electric vehicle for me, at least this month has been much easier than I have imagined. Just to finish this off, would I ever get a petrol car? No, the only reason I'd get a petrol car now is if I had financial difficulties, had to sell this car, had to get a cheap petrol car, like, I don't know, a, a, an 8,000 euro um, Sandero Dacia or something like that. Um, there are no cheap EVs at the moment. Um, and the ones that are cheap, like old second-hand ones, they just don't have the range that's good enough for me. So the only reason why I'd buy a petrol car now is if I had financial difficulties and buy an 8,000 euro um, Sandero or an even cheaper second-hand petrol car, even though you're even though I'd have to pay the petrol. Um, from now on, I'm never going back to petrol um, if I can afford it. Electric driving is absolutely amazing. I'm absolutely loving it. It is saving me money every month. So yes, I don't see myself ever going back to petrol driving unless I have financial difficulties. Or stupidly, the only other reason I go back to petrol driving is if I do so few kilometres, like 20, 30 kilometres a week, that it's just not financially viable to have such an expensive car. Because this car is expensive, 40,000 euros. If I'm only doing 20 or 30 kilometres a week, there's no point to have such an expensive car. In which case, I would probably decide to go back to petrol and you're only doing 20 or 30 kilometers a week in a car and it's a petrol car you're not really doing any dam you're not doing that much damage to the environment because you're not using that much petrol so yes so um yeah so any reason so that'd be another reason for going back to a petrol car if my fan financial situation continues good and then the, all indications are it will do. I'm never going back to a petrol car again. The EV is so much better, so much easier. It's absolutely amazing and I'm loving it. Thank you again for watching and bye.